Hey everyone! In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this Space Invaders background. When we zoom in, you can see that there are little Space Invader characters made into a pattern inside of a larger Space Invader character. A gray background that goes from kind of a, a dark gray out to something more charcoal and lines within the uh, lighter gray areas. Not only does this make a pretty cool desktop background, but the purpose of this is to really explain the difference between vector and vexel. So let's get started. Go to File, New, and you want to create a document that's 20 pixels by 20 pixels, and hit OK. Now it's really small, so we're going to have to zoom in all the way up to 3200. Create a new layer, and make the background layer invisible so we can have our interlaced grid. Now the reason we're not going to use a brush for this pattern, there's a halo that's happening around the square that we made. So we need to use our pencil tool and you can right click on your brush or you can hit your B key or shift B to cycle through. We'll go up to 9 where our brush was and when we use our pencil tool there's no halo, there's no mess around it, it looks really clean. And we're actually going to use the first size, number 1, and that is very small, but because we're zoomed in so far, the squares that we're going to be creating will kind of snap to each other. It'll do a lot of the work for you, so you don't have to worry about being extremely accurate with this particular one. So we'll just start here. And there we go. It's actually a pretty easy pattern, but we're going to move this somewhere close to the center, and then we're going to crop around it. Make sure that your parameters for your cropping tool are set to a square. I have mine 10 by 10. You can have whatever, just as long as it's equal. Because we just want to get this a little smaller. We don't want it too small. But what we had initially was a little large. I think that looks okay. Make sure that you have room on your sides and about an equal amount of room on the top and bottom. With that set, you want to go to Edit, Define Pattern, and we'll name it In Invader. Now make a new document and we'll make this 1920 by 1080. and we'll get started. So we need that darker gray color. We'll use that and then make another layer and also color it with that. Double click on layer one and we want to choose pattern overlay. In your patterns, go down and you can see where I had created the invader pattern earlier and then the one that we just created now I'll go ahead and use that one, but I'm going to scale it up to probably 150%. I don't want it to be too large because you know, it falls out around the edges, but at this size, when you go into 100%, you're really not going to be able to tell that the edges may be a little fuzzed or that it's larger than what it should be. I may even make it a little larger than that. That's okay. Now here is where we get into the discussion of vector and vexel, because this gets a little frustrating. So make another layer and make it like a red color and we'll go back to our pencil tool and we'll make this, I don't know, 74, 75. Okay, we have a perfect square. What's unfortunate about this is the fact that we can zoom in as far as we want but these squares won't snap together perfectly as they did when we were creating these smaller Space Invader characters. That's because we're not zooming in at 3200, and even if we did, we wouldn't be able to see what it was we were doing. So it takes time to line those up perfectly. The reason we can't just take one of these smaller characters, go back over to, you know, something of this sort, and drag it over here, and then scale it up, 
is because this is a Vexel image. And you can see what happened to it. It blurs out, it just doesn't look like anything, really. Now, if we were working with a vector image, like an illustrator, we would be able to take that very tiny, tiny vector and scale it up to be as big as a building, and it would look the exact same. There would be no distortion, no blur, but that's not the case. And Photoshop does not have a true vector. Regardless of what anybody says, Photoshop is Vexel-based. Now, what is Vexel? Vexel is the combination of the word pixel, and vector. Because you're kind of doing the same thing as you would with a vector layer, but it's made out of pixels that are locked within a raster. Now those are a lot of garbled words, let's kind of explain that. A raster is a set of horizontal lines composed of individual pixels, which form an image. So when you take these pixels with a set amount of light and dimension, and you try to give it the property of a vector layer, that's how you get something of this sort. And it would happen, this, this blurring would happen to this red layer if we... If we scaled it up accordingly and made it really large, it would also be blurry on the edges. So this just means that we are stuck kind of doing this the long way in Photoshop. Meaning that we have to create this larger image and really be careful about lining up these squares instead of doing something extremely small where the squares kind of snap together and we don't have to worry about them lining up. So since we've explained Vexel, what exactly is vector? Well, a vector is an element of vector space. In linear algebra, a vector space is characterized by its dimension. Basically, the number of independent directions it can go in space. So these vectors, which are characterized by dimension and space are kind of endowed by a structure called an inner product and that's what it's made up of and this inner product is what associates the vector with a scalar quality and scalar is just what it sounds like it allows you to scale within that vector space and the reason that it does that is because these inner products allow for geometric notations of length and angle which all of that just means with a vector layer, you can make it as large and as small as you want because these inner products inherently play with dimension. And because it's meant to do that, or it has the properties to do that, it's not going to blur out the edges. There's going to be zero distortion. It's mathematically described and meant to do that. So while vexel images have to worry about distorted pixels, a vector layer can move independently in any direction with its scalar qualities with zero distortion. So go ahead and zoom in really far. I recommend at least uh, 300% and line up these squares as well as you can to make a larger Space Invader character. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to spend the time doing that. It should take you probably a good five minutes to really get those on there. So here's the image that I created in the last document and I'm just gonna work from here. Control click on your first layer, your pattern layer, and with your Space Invader layer selected still, we need to line this up in the center. So select your move tool and then we want to align it. With that centered, move your pattern layer to the top you want to hold alt and click between the two and that'll create what is called a clipping mask and now you notice that the space invader pattern is inside of the larger space invader character and I actually want to make this background darker Take your pattern layer and switch it to um, soft light and that'll give you your, your red color. Double click on your character layer. You want a bevel and emboss. You want an inner bevel, smooth. You want the direction to be going down, not up. And kind of mess with the size and the softening. And you want to take your highlight down to um, I have mine set at 3, you can take yours to 0, but it makes some sort of a difference. 
you have it up, it just kind of looks weird. Make a new file, again, make it 10 pixels by 10 pixels. Zoom in. Get your pencil out. You still want it to only be one pixel, and you want to make this line here, and then take the opacity down somewhere around 30% uh, or something, and go in between. So make the line stick out a little more. And then we need one here, one here, one here, and one here. Don't forget to make your background layer invisible, and then again go to edit and define pattern, and it'll pop up in your uh, pattern options. And I'm going to take the size of this down to probably 55% because I don't want it to be anything that really takes away from the Space Invaders. We already have a lot happening with this pattern as it is. Also, I'm going to do a gradient overlay and I'm going to change it to radial and I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to make the scale a little larger, take the opacity down some. I think color dodge looks okay with that. And that way we get a softer gray with the darker gray on the outside. And it looks like the lines are kind of coming in here and fading out over towards that direction. If you wanted, you can change the color of the inside easily. You can either do a color overlay, and I don't know, make it something obnoxious, and mess with your settings that way, or you can simply just go to image adjustment and hue and saturation, and change it that way. So I hope this helps with a better understanding of vector and vexel. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, keep working with patterns and simple images, and learn how to make Photoshop work for you regardless of the vector-vexel issue.